So this video actually spans three days. This is 331, uh, April 1st and April 2nd. And I'm reading the instructions to fully understand what I'm supposed to be doing here, which is marking uh, the some screw holes, which is what you see me there. Certain of the holes on the skin, on the top of the skin, and that's important, uh, this is where you actually first define which side is top or bottom. And by marking those holes, I'm saying this side is top and don't drill those holes. Or just as importantly, don't dimple those holes, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and you can see here, now I begin the process, now that everything is match drilled, of basically backtracking and undoing everything. Uh, I'm setting aside all the various parts on top of my instructions there uh, before you know, taking them out and uh, priming, and also doing some cleanup there. You can see I had one of the one of the pieces that I hadn't yet uh, gone through and deburred, and that's what I'm doing right here. Everything you're seeing is step five and step six of section eight dash nine, and that's just all the disassembly. And it just takes time, you know, lots and lots of pieces. And here I'm collecting up everything to rush it out to uh, my driveway, where I've got some cardboard down and have been. Uh, spray painting and, and priming everything. There I go again. Beautiful day for it, you know, not too windy. But here's the next day. So each, each of these are about an hour and a half. So here's the next day where I start on step seven, which is, uh, I'm sorry, this is still step six, I believe, deburring. And then step seven is dimpling, which I'll get to. Um, Per my previous video, I said, you know, I, I may not be doing enough deburring. Well, I wanted to make sure that all this, the holes on the backs of the skin, here I am the next day, uh, are correctly deburred and, and smooth. And so I'm going through and making sure that all those holes I drilled, and remember there's like 325 of them per side, are smooth. And, uh, you know, tedious, but I did it. Then I put the dimpler up on the, on the table and I start the dimpling process. So like the squeezer, uh, the dimpler is awesome. And this, this video is going really fast, so it makes it look like I'm just slamming that dimpler down. I'm not. Uh, you actually just kind of lower it until it's in the hole, and you kind of just push it down gently until it goes thunk, and then you move on to the next hole. Uh, like I said, though, there's 300 and something holes per side, uh, and so it takes a goodly amount of time. Uh, and there's a couple times I go back and I check the instructions just to make sure that there aren't any holes I'm not supposed to be uh, dimpling because there are a lot of holes and, 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 you know, at this point I couldn't really remember what some of them were for. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't dimpling something I wasn't supposed to dimple. Never hurts to check, you know, uh, but the only ones you're not supposed to dimple are the ones that you marked, which are the, the ones I talked about before, the, the I think, five per side uh, or five on the, on the tops. Uh, which, you know, again, you've marked them, so you know what they are, and there you go. I can't even imagine doing this, the mallet method. I have to think that your arm would just be dead after, you know, swinging the, the C-frame mallet just hundreds of time in a single sitting. It must be brutal. So, yeah, this, this device was definitely worth its money. And this is the final day of dimpling and yay here we go again on the other skin so yeah that previous day was just doing the one skin uh, and now I'm doing the other one it takes a goodly amount of time like I said it ain't quick the little table by the way that I built really makes things easier I wish I had made it a little longer uh, as you can see here you know it starts to kind of hang off and I have to support it a little bit I I probably should have thought that through but eh, what do you do really it probably won't become a problem again until uh, well, maybe the body or the wings, I'm not sure. And here I changed the camera angle on you guys to give you a better notion of exactly what I'm doing. And you you can definitely see the dimples as they slowly, uh, or quickly in this case, uh, jump onto the skin as uh, through the power of editing. Yay. I wonder if these dimple dyes wear out. I mean, the, I guess they're hardened steel, and this is aluminum, so I have to think they must have thousands of dimples in them. Uh, if not more, so they probably don't, but eh, I don't know. So here I'm going through and doing the noses. Uh, and the nose ribs, this is where I've made my first mistake. Um, w remember, some of, the, some of the holes in the skins are not dimpled, which I correctly did not dimple them. I actually did dimple the hole in the nose, which was not supposed to be dimpled. Uh, oops. I'm gonna have to call Vans and see if that's a problem, uh, or maybe just wait until it's time to to put that uh, finishing piece on to see if it's an issue or if I've completely screwed the pooch. 
Um, and at this point, I'm so far ahead, I've actually already got it riveted on. And I didn't notice until after I had it riveted. And then I started looking at it going, oh. So we'll see. Hopefully, it's no big deal. I think I can fix it with the squeezer. Just put the two flats on the other side of the squeezer and squeeze it back flat. Uh, we'll see. But there you go. That's what I did uh, across these three days. And hey, more stuff down. Thanks, guys.